In the trendy part of town, there is a shop called The Cat's Pajamas, where patrons can meet and play with cats up for adoption, all while drinking coffee or tea. Often, several cats would sit or sleep in the storefront window, attracting the attention of passers-by, who would tap on the glass and make baby sounds at the felines, who would then pointedly ignore them. After all, it wasn't like they were offering food or anything, like catnip. In truth, the cats found the antics of these strange two-legged beings more annoying than amusing, which is why they liked to sit in the window in the wee small hours of the morning when the two-leggeds weren't around. 3 a.m. Three cats sat in the window. They studiously avoided talking to one another. But, after all, cats can't talk. Or, at least, their vocabulary is rather limited. But cats can share emotions telepathically, something they were again studiously refusing to do. Hunter was a mixture of white and black fur, with a black smudge on her nose and beady yellow eyes, and she was indeed a hunter, watching the activity on the street, on the constant lookout for something, anything, anything to chase, to capture, and consume. She ignored her companions, focused as she was on finding something to kill. Spooky cowered beside her, a small black cat with enormous wide green eyes. Everything frightened Spooky, especially those two-legged things, things that banged on the glass and made weird noises at him, which is why he sat in the window in the middle of the night when those two-leggeds weren't around. Although there were those noisy things with lights that went whizzing by on the road. And then there was Tramp. Tramp was a rescue cat, a bundle of disheveled gray fur with disarming, disarming blue eyes and a lousy attitude. Tramp was always in the window, looking out at the world he wanted to rejoin. He missed the freedom of the streets he had known as a kitten. True, you got fed in this place, but the grub wasn't enough, and there was never enough grub. Cats are always hungry. These were the cats who were sitting in the window when the other two-legged thing came, a thing that was different than the others a thing that was scarier. It was tall and emaciated with grayish flesh and incredibly long dark claws and two red beady eyes that seemed, seemed to stare through you. Hunter immediately arched her back in frightened aggression, Tramp sidling up behind her to be out of harm's way, while Spooky shut his luminous green eyes, his luminous green eyes, and pretended to be asleep. Hunter hissed at the thing, which hissed back at her, startling the terrified Spooky into making a loud, Meow! The gray thing went, Meow! The three cats sat frozen, Although they would have been unable to explain it, they instinctively knew that what they were hearing was somehow wrong. For what they heard was not the sounds made by a real live feline. Instead, what they heard was more like a metallic, slightly distorted recording of the sounds made by a real feline. It was counterfeit, unreal, 
But then, what stood on the street before them was not a human being, but a flesh gate. Flesh gate, a shape shifting paranormal entity which targets both humans and animals, consuming them, body and soul. They can mimic the voice and appearance of friends and loved ones, lulling victims into a false sense of security before they pounce. In natural or unnatural appearance, the flesh gate is said to be a tall, emaciated cryptid with grayish flesh and incredibly long claws. The woods become deathly silent at their approach and they are suspected of being responsible for many of the missing 411 disappearances. The flesh gate stood facing them through the window, alternately hissing and meowing, while the three cats stared back wide-eyed, paralyzed by fear. But after a while, the thing went away. Still, the three amigos were in shock and stayed rooted in the window, although Spooky finally raised his head and began to look around. Yet the cat came back, except it wasn't really a cat. It was a cat in appearance, a slender, silver tabby, which appeared to have been well cared for. Yet it had red eyes. Cats don't have red eyes, nor do their meows sound like a tape recording played through a set of fuzzy speakers. And this strange cat didn't have a tail, like it was a Manx cat. But it wasn't a Manx cat. Hunter, Spooky, and Tramp all fled the window, seeking a dark corner at the other side of the building, where they spent the night sleeping together, something they had never done before. Yet their sleep was uneasy, as they were troubled by dreams, or at least night visions, of the silver tabby crouched on the pavement outside. Night visions of pursuit, of consumption, of absorption, of death. The light of dawn was slowly filtering into the interior of the shop when the dozing cats heard, Oh my! And and who might you be? No collar, eh? Oh dear, what happened to your tail? Would you like to come in? The voice belonged to one of the two-legged things that came to the shop during the daylight hours and who fed them. They liked that, but who also fussed over them and was always making noise at them, something they didn't like. The front door opened and the two-legged waddled in, the silver tabby, minus its tail, at her heels. Uh, Are you hungry? the two-legged said half turning towards the fake cat. And that's when it happened. The tabby seemed to rise onto its back paws as a pall, a pall of swirling gray mist, appeared to vacate its slender body and enwrap and surround the two-legged one, who staggered and fell against the wall, and then straightened up and said, Oh my... And who might you be? No collar, eh? Oh dear, what happened to your tail? Would you like to come in? Are you hungry? All the cats housed in cats' pajamas, some fifteen in total, scattered. For they sensed danger. Danger from both the two-legged thing and the cat. That wasn't really a cat. Both cat and two-legged headed directly for Hunter, for Tramp, and for Spooky. And who knows what might have happened then 
had someone not knocked on the back door. The two-legged one went to the back door, followed by the supposed tabby, and opened it. Another two legs stood in the doorway, holding a large paper bag. I brought the kitty litter and the food. Can you give me a hand? It's all in the trunk. To which the first two leg, the Flushgate's first victim, replied, Oh my, and who might you be? No collar, eh? Oh dear, what happened to your tail? Would you like to come in? Are you hungry? What? And now the new two-legged found itself, herself, enveloped in the grayish mist. And Tramp, followed by Hunter, even followed by Spooky, made a beeline for the open back door. They ran down the alley behind the store, past the dumpsters and the parked cars, fired by a common idea. The precarious life of the streets was preferable to an encounter with that thing. The Flesh Gate. So, were the three cats able to escape the Flesh Gate? Well, I certainly hope they were able to flee. Caller. If this is your first visit to my channel, please consider subscribing. My name is Warren, and I write and tell original ghost stories and original horror stories featuring such cryptids as the Night Floaters, Werewolves, and the Black-Eyed Children. So again, please consider subscribing. Please help me to reach my goal of 2,021 subs in 2021. Till midnight. Cheers! Pictures used in today's presentation, courtesy of Pix Here, that's P X Here, while the music is The Dreadful, The Dread, by that patron of the internet, Kevin McLeod.